weekend. We are at the best weekend card show for the Saturday show, trade night, and also Sunday. It's gonna be a dual vlog because I'm gonna be both buying cards on the floor as well as setting up as a dealer. You guys will see my showcase set up shortly. Anyways, I wanna set a goal so this weekend. I wanna make sure that I'm able to sell $2,000 at my table and buy around 5,000 on the floor. If I'm able to achieve those, I'm gonna grab Regina's Pizza and also Mike's Cannoli in downtown Boston. But don't hit those numbers, no cannoli or pizza. So I have to make sure it is a great card show. Let's make it happen. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Jim. Brian. Brian, you yep. set up? Uh, out of the front, yeah. Okay. But I just got here, so yeah, yeah, I have yeah. no chance. Can you do 200 on this one? 250. Let's do it. 200. Awesome. So we ended up picking up this triple autograph of Gwyn, Sandberg, and Boggs. What's really cool about this card is they're all 1983 rookies and all Hall of Famers. I didn't really see any other triples with all of them on there, so kind of tough to find it comp-wise. But I feel like 220 was a pretty fair value, and someone would definitely want that in their PC. So a couple really fun Vintage F1 sets. Vintage F1, there's so much to discover, there's so much to learn. This is a really great pre-war set. This is Rene Dreyfus, who raced for Bugatti back in the day. And this is a really great set. It's uh, Jean Dunant, Jean Dunant Dupont, French candy set. Uh, really the reason why you might have heard of this is there's a great Babe Ruth card from this set. After that, following the pre-war. This is 1934 Ilse Sweets. This is either Hungarian or Czech. I apologize, I'm blanking right now. But this is Luigi Fagioli, who at 53 years old is the oldest driver to ever win an F1 Grand Prix. Two variations, there's blank backs, there's numbered backs. This is blank back. And then this is Jacques Chocolate, Le Monde Auto. Jacques Chocolate was a Belgian chocolate company. They made a bunch of different multi-sport issues and they did some non-sport issues. The F1 drivers got grouped into the non-sport auto issue. Juan Manuel Fangio, five-time WDC. Absolutely amazing. SGC just started grading this. Pop one. All right, here's all your stuff over there. Thank you, sir. There you go. What, are we, what are we doing? Oh, I'm finally recording some B-roll and stuff like that while setting up a little bit. So, we grabbed those from, I can't remember what show it was. It was a Florida show. You were yeah, it was, it, was, it, was on, it, was, it was like a 20 table show. The guy yeah. set up with all those carts. That's Separate. amazing, right? Separate, yeah. yeah. So how many was there, like 10 or 20 of them? I thought there were 17. 17, all right, let's see them. Two, three, four. All five, six, six and seven. seven. Eight, nine, 10. 13, 14, 15, 16. 16. I knew it was around 16 or something. Maybe we were negotiating on the last one. And then yeah. we're off on the price. Yeah. Fan these out. Really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 I haven't bought anything since these because I was waiting for these. I don't, I'm afraid to double buy. Like I need yeah. to go in and mark the certification so Makes I don't sense on that. Um, get something else. That'll be fun. I can't wait for you to finish that though. If any of this moves better than hockey, we'll work something out. If not, just tell me to get lost. That might be decent. Yeah. <laughs> the price on it isn't necessarily the price. Either. Okay. This might be decent. I can move. So we have the Greffy Refractor from 03, the Gary Carter, which I'll throw this in my jersey PC for now. And two color swatch, two I know, it's, it's nice red and blue, right? <laughs> yeah. And then the Ripken over here, definitive auto jersey on there, pretty popular card. And then in return, 150, those two McDavid's. Wish I bought so much, I wish I bought the Young Gun back then when they were a lot cheaper. I know I got these like 10, 15 dollars, if that, damn, if I just yeah. put them to one of the YG's. 
This I picked up at a show a long time ago. I can't remember if it was bargain bit or not. And then I guys did the other stuff. stuff. All the dollar stuff. So yeah, I mean, pretty much equal on it. We do a lot of business together. Yep. So appreciate it. That's what having friends in the yeah, hobby is for. Right? We each have our own clientele. And uh, we know what moves for each other. Make swaps. Absolutely, I do. I do a lot more vintage baseball and just baseball in general. You do a bunch of hockey, so it works out for both of us. Absolutely, man. Thanks as always, Ryan. Thank you. You cool with 90 on that one because there's a 90, 110, and 70. So just middle. Yeah. All right. 90 on that. Thought for sure you would want these cool holes, right? They would move, right? Oh, yeah. those. It, it's kind of tougher. Do you have room on this Ripken? If not, no worries because they are kind of all over the place. Top? There's a 315 that sold for 80 with that, and then there's one over here that sold for 75. But that's way less than the sticker. None of them are the exact card, though, right? No. I just put the Ripken Definitive number 25. Yeah. I see your box again. And then just double check all those are about right. Just like the ones I know are. are the yeah. And I'm gonna pick those first anyway. Okay, perfect. Depending on what, like if you want to keep a couple McDavid's in stock or whatever. That's yeah. Fine. Because I I don't do much hockey, so like I'm fine with whatever. All right, we're next to uh, Ryan here. Uh, we're gonna open up a box of archives. So uh, I'm excited. Let's go. Uh, you can you can follow me at Hobby Cards 101 on Instagram, and you can follow uh, Benji Baller Cards on Instagram. Benji yeah. Baller underscore. All right, let's get into this box, guys. We're gonna rip. Oh, what is this? Who's that? Abdul Mandesi. Raul. Raul. Number sixty-eight. That's nice on card. Another magic. Herbert Jones to 50. He's not bad. I've heard of him. Herbert Jones. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ben, catch the fakes. Yep. There you go. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. We're selling this BVG4. Thank you for the diamond handle. Pretty decent centering on it. There's that. You looking for other mantles as well? Or just that um, one? I was just looking. Just, 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 just do that right. 350, 400, 450. Cool. You got that. Thanks, man. No problem. Thank you. I have one other one in this box. Okay. I'll just show that to you real quick. No, oh, no bother, man. There's the internet. Absolutely. I don't well, think there's too many 20 somethings from Orlando dealing in this stuff. Like probably not. Army of one. Well, I appreciate it. There it is. I can do a lot less than 40 on it since you only got a card. What would you do? I'll do 25. Yeah, I'll do that. And then I have some other vintage cards if you want to just look through that. Oh, the I've Hendrix. The 73 one. Panini, okay. It's a cool card. And yeah, I apologize. I would do that Hooper in a second if you hit me. No, you're good. All right, so we're heading to trade night now. Show is done for today. But we have all day tomorrow, which I'm going to try to do some more buying in the main room and then set it up. It's just it's tough when you get to a card show late. We have a few deals that are kind of pending already for a trade night as well. So I'm working towards a 1960 Willie Mays. I think it was an SGC6. There's two 67s as well. Uh, we're gonna try making that deal with Up North Collectors. He's another YouTube channel. Met him for the first time in Michigan. And if you guys remember that Aaron Judge lot that I purchased a few months ago, I ended up selling that all to him. So we've done a lot of business together. Hope to see some other deals happen at trade night. So we'll see. First deal of trade night ended up selling the 58 Mantle Aaron in a three for 225. I have one of these in a seven and also one just got graded in my bulk SGC submission. So no need to have three in inventory at the moment. Another sale at trade night, we ended up selling the triple auto, Benintendi and Yaz in this Ozzy Albies for 160 bucks. There you go, thank you. All right guys, we're gonna do a pack battle up here at the stage. We have Topps Chrome Platinum 2021, $5 a pack. Whoever gets the autograph gets to keep all the cards in the box. So if you guys are interested, come up to the stage. We have to have 24 packs sold. 
five dollars a pack. All right, we sold out. He's got it. Who is it? Alright guys, so we gotta walk up to see if this is real or fake. This is a 1965 Mickey Mantle. Take a look at this over here. Centering isn't perfect. You guys can see the back. We're gonna pull it out of the case. There's a few different tools, a black right here, and also a loop. Let's take a look. And this one, 100% fake. I don't even need to use this. So the surface, so smooth, right? Like does not work. And you guys can see like the corners over here, like they look almost perfect. But just to show you guys as well, watch what happens when I use a black light. See how it's super bright like this? This should not be the case. And it's not gonna show well on video, but if I use a loop and looked under the printing on how this would be, it would be also incorrect. This card is no good. Yeah, it's like 500 sticker, so I do it 425. Could I just take a look at, uh, yeah. so like what sets are these? I'm just... Those are E220s, those are National Caramels. What year did these come out in? These were 1920 or 22, around that area. It's like one of those that has like a two year period. If you want the cut auto, 25 bucks and you throw it in. Ended up selling the Connie Mac. I had this a while ago. I wanted to get the slab, but SGC said no. I mean, you literally see on the slab. Or not slab, but on the paper, they said no. 100% real card though, and uh, ended up selling it for $110. All right, here you go. Awesome. Thank you. Take care. We're heading down to set up. So I think the strategy, what we were going to do today, is we'll start off with uh, setting up as a dealer, is you have initial rush of traffic for the first few hours, and then go around and buy once the traffic dies out. Almost hit the dealer quota goal, which is really great to see, but I did not buy much yesterday. I think I spent about $250. So that definitely needs to change to have to buy at least a few grand uh, worth of cards today. And, you know, I'm not sure what I'll buy. There's definitely a lot of modern here. There is a sprinkle of vintage. There is some high-end vintage cards. There's like a 1952 Bowman Mantle and a 2.5 that I had somewhat of interest in. There's a campy rookie that might be able to get. So I'll take you along the way. All right, so you guys can see the showcase that I have over here over to the right, as well as some bargain bins. The goal really was to have a mixture of sports. So, I mean, I'm obviously baseball vintage focused, but I also have some football here, hockey and cricket. The bargain bins, because not everyone can afford 50 or $100 slabs. I want to get some sales anywhere from like 50 cents to $5. And then I have some cheap singles from $10 to like 40-ish. So try to have cards for every single person that walks by. I know the presentation isn't the best, but I don't really set up that often. When I do set up, I'm going to invest a lot into the graphics and also some better showcases. Both of these, 80. This last one sold for 70. I know I'm going to hold on to it for a while. You have a yeah, cycle yourself. All right, so we sold both these for $80 first. The Frank Brooks, Bollinger, and Powell. This is a really cool card I found in a bargain in a while ago. This one's numbered to 197 of 100, and then a mini Minozo autograph, 80 bucks. Here we go. Thank you. The 54 Minozo for 15 bucks. Here you go. Thank you. Selling off these two, we got them a car, and then also a snack. Pretty popular over here in Boston, $30 for the pair. Sweet. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you, man. I appreciate it. And if you want to check out my YouTube channel as well, breakout cards on there. I post weekly for card show blogs. Thank you. Before we get to this next deal, which is over $2,000, can you please subscribe to the channel? It's 100% for free. And it helps out the YouTube algorithm. That way I can show more people vintage sports cards. This one. The 58? Yeah. Where do we put this one? Yeah, 
Do you think it could be around 2300? The only reason I say that is that one was like really nice and centered and did 27 and it didn't have the little bit of like the paper loss in the back. Right. Could you do 25? Meet me at 24. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Right. Sweet. So that's a strong way to start day number two. 1952 Bowman Mantle. Definitely one of the biggest mantle cards that I've owned inventory wide. This won't be going into the PC. I think if I was going to get a mantle for the PC, it'd be the 51 Bowman. But uh, 52, you can't go wrong. It's always an extremely popular card, especially those that can't afford the tops. That has gotten out of hand price wise but not too bad at $2,400. Sold this Eusebio over to Matt. He's not here today, so I'm dropping it off for Trent, but this sold for $40. Let's see. Deal. There you go. Thank you. No problem. That. All right, guys, we're here with Filmington. He's holding the camera, but someone brought up this Lou Gehrig up to his table. I was gonna show you guys how this is actually fake. So first, like the texture feels wrong. I have this Fred Fitzsimmons that's assigned Gaudi. Now it's obviously trimmed. You guys can see there is no border in comparison to this Lou Gehrig, but they're printed on the same exact sheets, same printing process, so they should feel the same. Just the surface feels completely off on this Lou Gehrig. It is a better fake than some of the others that I've seen. The coloring on this one also way, way different, but the, the sign that is super easy, if you guys use a loop and then look at the printing over here, it's not gonna show on camera. It's all pixelated for the name for Lou Gehrig, which should not be the case. When I use this with the Fred Fitzsimmons, it is all solid printing. So I know without a doubt that Lou Gehrig is fake. Also, one of my favorite ways to do it, smells brand new, smells like old cardboard. So use it and look over there. So you see how the printing is? How it's all yeah. pixelated? Yep, yep, yep. Now go to the Fred Fitzsimmons. Oh. Way different, right? Yeah, yeah. So, same printing process, why are they completely different? Wow. All right, $80 right here. We just sold this Harry Hooper. Both of my E220s sold this weekend. Appreciate it, thank you. Enjoy it. Okay. Sold a few of my bargain bin slabs for $50. Forgot to record it, but another quick deal at the table. Unfortunately, the campy dealer couldn't make it to the show today, so I have to find another card to really get to that $5,000 worth of spending at the show. So we're gonna keep our eyes peeled. There's a few 33 Gaudis that I saw that might be interested in and some T206s, so maybe we can link up that deal there. Oh, good Why did those two, how much cash do you think you throw on? Throwing 50? Yeah, I was thinking that's good. Perfect, yeah. sweet. You guys, we just made a trade with Up North Collectors. Ended up getting his two 1967 Mays as well as $50 for a bunch of Verlander rookie cards uh, that I've really had in my collection for a while. Most of these I bought as a kid probably for a dollar or two dollars. Yeah, I moved, so I have a shop in Michigan. We moved Verlander stuff super easy, so it worked out great for us. Got out of some bigger uh, vintage stuff, moved into some cheaper stuff that I can flip really quickly and shop. People are always looking for Verlander. If they're Detroit Tigers fans, they're not much to cheer for, so Verlander's one of their guys. But make sure to uh, keep watching Ryan's channel. He does some awesome work on there. And check out our channel too, Up North Collectors. We rip stuff on YouTube all the time, so make sure to check it out. So I'll show you something here. So this card I got from Jeremy Lee. You know Jeremy Lee. Yeah, I know Jeremy. So he got in an industry like Beckett Summit. Is yeah. one of the cards so this is game used right nice and recently i just located this card and i'm gonna get it in the mail next week uh same set 2020 yeah. industry summit the e from this jersey right yeah. now watch this this is That's from his cool. photo match to his rookie year against tom brady That's week sick. week 18 all right so i've got the bills logo and now i'll have that e together is that photo match of that one right yes too? yes Oh, that's incredible. Right? So I just want to show you that, man. That's pretty sweet. Nice pickup. It's my only freaking Josh Allen cards, and I feel like, you know, game use football. Still, like, yeah, you don't see game use no, football. No, you don't. I'd have interest in Campy. I moved this stuff. Okay. Take a look at the LCO. He always calls it the worst times. It's the FF. Definitely yeah, good. I'm going to keep that one. That one's like my favorite. Yeah, it's, it's not worth an end. It's my favorite. That's my first card I bought, getting back into the hobby. That's a good card to start with, right? Yeah, dude. And those are just my That's like full Red Sox thing. Oh, cool. Red Sox. Oh, yeah. those are cool. Yeah, dude. No and these are just like nationals. Just, you know, like a... Like, okay. Are you keeping the Kofax rookie as well? Or is on that one? Nah, I'm, I'd move that, probably. And then all these over here. Just oh, the and then the 56s. Yeah, so all these. Uh, yeah, pretty much the hand okay. right. the Yeah, pretty much these guys. And that one right here. And, uh, yeah, that Was one. there anything that you liked in my showcase? Yeah. 
Yeah, let's uh, work out on something on these. Do you have like approximate values where these I are? I haven't looked at anything today yet. I've been so right. busy. Yeah, I haven't even checked any. For four years, okay. I had a few extra on my website, but so I gave one to you. I gave one to Luke. Okay. So basically, you get one pack of each of these, and there's the website and the there's like RC Explosion Box specific Instagram and all that stuff. Uh, or just Filmington. Sweet. Whatever. No, I appreciate but, it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I know you like Machado, so I'm like, yeah, let's give one. I was gonna send one to Phil Hughes. I'm like, I don't even know if I'll even open it. <laughs> I'll, I'll open it on video. I'll make it a video upload this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, cool. Yeah. So we're gonna open this up. Number to 49. That's cool. That, isn't that cool? That's really cool. You guys want to use that art trade? I mean, it's up to him, honestly. It's so weird to say stuff. They Can't take it out the back? Well, barnstorming. So, if you're familiar with barnstorming, like they played Negro Leaguers and other minor league teams and stuff like that. Right. It's like kind of like a spring training bat or yeah. something like that. I didn't want them to pull a fast one and be like, you know, yeah. Babe Ruth was in the same room as it, you know, because <laughs> sometimes they do like. Babe well, Ruth has members. breathed the same air yeah. as this baseball yeah, card. 20 some, years earlier. <laughs> they'll cut something like this and ba it's like uh, Babe Ruth's great, great grandson gave us his jersey, bought straight from Dick's Sporting Goods. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, so we're at 310 there, plus another 400, so 710, plus 50, 760, 860, and then we're at 1060. Hold on. Let me get that. Just double check. 3, 710, 760, 860. So I'm at 1060. Okay. Total value. 1060 ish over there. So I'm thinking we'll take off 200 on that one. So 860 ish. And then we'll do. Two. 700 cash. Because 80% would be 688, yeah. so I'll round it up over there since you're taking down the trade. Uh, what do you, 2700 for that? 2700 on that. I shouldn't spend any money. Uh, no, like, like I said, that's why I try to show comps and like, I want to be fair on both sides of things. No. I don't want to be like, no, look at a card and say, this is a $100 card, but like, really it's a $300 right, card. That's, exactly. why I, that's why I share it. Like, this is where I think it's going about. This is where I'd like to yeah. be at. So no, that was awesome. Things. I really appreciate you guys because I felt like an idiot at first because I had that at home when I had my other pile, in his case, at the show. And I was like, oh. I wanted to talk to you personally. No, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I Sweet. So, I'll give you 700 and let's do it on PayPal and you got that map. Awesome. Really Thank you. Man. No problem, man. We're picking up that lot for $700 plus 200 trade with that Babe Ruth backcard. Knew that Ruth would eventually move. I had so much interest on it, but no one ended up buying it. So, glad we were able to parlay that into that trade. Those are all pretty good cards. The Kofax rookie has been going down a little bit, but still so iconic and there's a ton of buyers on that. I should have no problem moving those cards. So we made a few sales real quick online. Well, I posted my showcase. We sold this Nolan Aeronaut a lot. Has the Emerald in there, but has a bunch of other rookies, 100 bucks, whatever. And the most of these pretty cheap. Then we have a 2007 Verlander jersey autograph, sold that for 140. And then we have our E220 that was trimmed fresh. This sold for $100. So to be able to pick up 340 while already at the show, not too bad. I do a 550 on this. Do a 550 on that? They're like all over the place. No, they are. I'm gonna go for like five, four fifty, five hundred. Usually, a pretty, pretty beat out. If I did the pair between the Berg and Mantle, where do you think you would be at around? Do some cash and some PayPal as well. Yeah, twenty three hundred. Can you do twenty two? We got twenty two fifty. Let's do it. Exactly. So ended up picking up these two cards, 59 Mantle. You see those all the time, but then this 33 Gaudi of Mo Berg. If you guys don't know Mo Berg's story, he was a spy, played over in Japan as well. One of the most interesting baseball players of all time. They actually made a movie out of him. Uh, but 700 cash, 1550 PayPal for the pair. We're making some big buys today. What did you have on your Fox? $100. And your Barrow? How much was it? 50. 50. Can I take a look at both of those as well? So 250, 5, and then 580. Make it 6. Be about 630. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. As people were packing up, made one last deal. Unfortunately, didn't see the vendor yesterday. He was set up, so I must have skipped the row or quickly glanced by. But a ton of like pre war and vintage cards. Kind of sucks because we would have been able to make some more deals yesterday, and I'm sure some of the inventory sold. But either way, at least we're able to pick up these four.
to hit both of my goals. It's now time for pizza and also a cannoli. If you guys enjoyed the vlog, you should make sure to watch this one right here. I was actually at their local card show last year. Picked up some great cards.